greed. You know what it does? It deceives the mind, it blinds the eyes, it hardens the heart, and it takes the lives of its possessors. Many have been hurt by the arrows of ugliness, selfishness, and hatefulness that the greed of someone else has aimed at them. But what about you and I? Might we be harboring greed somewhere in our own heart or life? In today's episode, not only will we take a look at greed and explore where greed just might be hidden in our own lives, but we'll also take a look at the cure for greed as well, because yes, there is a cure. So stay tuned, because today is the day you're going to shine the light on the darkness of greed and conquer it. Hi, and welcome to One Little Candle, a place where God's people can come to be encouraged and inspired to be the light that God calls us to be. And when our flame is burning bright, we can't help but light the flame of others along the way. Don't think that you can make a difference in your little corner of the world? Yes, you can, because all it takes is one little candle. I'm your host, Rebecca Bershwinger. Thanks for joining me for today's episode. Would you like to be part of a global outreach, sharing the word of God around the world without ever leaving your home and for as little as two hours of your time each week? Right now, people around the world are hurting more than ever, and they're looking for answers. They're desperate for hope, and many search for hope and answers online. Search for Jesus, a ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, is actually looking for volunteers like you, right now, to share the gospel online. You can make a lasting impact for God's kingdom by becoming a Search for Jesus volunteer and see lives miraculously changed by Christ. I know, I know, you're probably thinking, I don't really feel equipped for something like that. Not a problem, because Search for Jesus has an excellent training staff and program to train and equip you right from the comfort of your home. And I can personally attest to just how wonderful their staff and training program is because I used to be an online volunteer for Search for Jesus. So I was a part of that training program. And I have to tell you, I never felt alone or left on my own to try and figure things out because they were always there for me and they were very patient with me because I kind of had a lot of questions and concerns. But even after you've completed your training, they're still there for you every step of the way. They're always providing the resources and tools that you will need to carry on your ministry of helping others to know that hope, that hope that's only found in Christ. So if you would like an opportunity to change lives and be a light in the darkness, you can learn more by logging on to www.searchforjesus.net. That's www.searchforjesus.net and help bring hope to a world in need. And now for today's episode. Hi everyone and welcome back. Today's episode is coming off of the last two episodes and we're going to pretty much wrap up what kind of ended up like being a mini series, I guess. If you haven't listened to the two previous episodes, episodes one and two, I would really encourage you to, so you can kind of even have more of a grasp of what we're talking about today and why we're even talking about greed. But even if you haven't, trust me, you're going to get a lot out of this episode. Originally, I wasn't even going to do an episode on greed, 
But I woke up one morning and the first thought in my head was, yeah, maybe I should do an episode about greed <laughs> because I had been thinking about a, a piece that I had written when my siblings and I were right in the middle of the worst of the uh, battle for trying to settle our, our dad's estate and the, the war that was kind of going on at the time. And so I wrote this piece and I had been thinking about it the night before and I woke up in the morning thinking maybe I should do an episode on greed. And then right away I was like, nah. <laughs> but I went up to the kitchen to get myself a cup of coffee. And while I was up there, I felt really compelled to go over and check out my little flip calendar. I have this little flip calendar with words of wisdom uh, for Billy Graham that I keep on there. But I hadn't looked at this thing in like two weeks. But for some reason that morning... I felt compelled to go over and see what the day's reading was. And uh, of course, guess what it was about? It said this, a close relative of covetousness, greed is quite possibly the parents of more evil than any other sin. Greed cheats, robs, murders, and slanders in order to achieve its desires. And each of us is born with greed in our nature. The Bible teaches that greed is idolatry because it places things at the center of our lives instead of God. As long as the prodigal son sang the song of give me, his life was misery, want, loneliness, and famine. But when he changed his song to forgive me, he found himself in the state of fellowship, comfort, and plenty. And then the reading asks, what song are you singing? Jeremiah 6.13 says, from the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. So at that point, after reading that, I thought, okay, God, I think I'll do an episode about greed. So here we are. Now, I had shared with you the effects that greed has had on me and it's had on my family, the effects of someone else's greed on us. But today, I'd mostly like to talk about the effects of our own greed and what it has on us. Yeah, you heard me right, our own greed. <laughs> greed is something, well, it's been around since the beginning of mankind. As a matter of fact, you could safely say that it was greed that plunged us all headlong into sin. Think about Adam and Eve in the garden. There they were. God had given them everything they could possibly want and then some. Except that one tree. The one fruit on the one tree. I would think that's not asking much, right? <laughs> you basically have the whole world at your fingertips. Just don't eat from that one tree, please. But it wasn't enough. They wanted more. And so they took the bite. Satan, of course, deceived Eve. Because, hey, Satan knew the power of greed too. After all, he himself... He got greedy. He wanted God's power and glory, and he tried to wage war in heaven to overthrow God, which to me, I don't know. Sometimes I think, boy, that's so stupid. <laughs> but I guess we're all guilty of doing some pretty stupid, foolish things. But so, yeah, he tries to overthrow God, and we all know how that worked out. He and his fellow angels, now we call them demons, who joined him in the anarchy. They were lost. They lost, and they were they're doomed to an eternity, eternity, I cannot talk today, in the lake of fire. But when it comes to greed, I think most of us think in terms of money and possessions. But, you know, there's a lot of other ways in which greed really seeps into our thoughts and our attitudes and our actions and, I don't know, maybe even our motives. In these ways, I don't think they seem, well, they're, they're not. They're not as obvious. So, Let's look at a few different ways in which greed might manifest itself without even realizing it. And then at the end of this, I want to discuss ways in which we can overcome that greed because there's two great ways which will completely help us to, to overcome that greed. I'm going to start out with a little Bible verse about it. Luke 12, 15 says, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And Colossians 3, 5 says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, 
sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. And I looked up the dictionary definition of greedy, and it's defined as the sin of desire or an excessive desire for more of something than is needed. So with that, those definitions in mind, let's just take a look at how greed might apply to our own life and where we're, we're guilty of it. I'll share with you, I guess, uh, confess, <laughs> some areas in which personally I struggle with greed. One of those areas is food. When it comes to food and eating, I'm a gr- I'm greedy. I can be gluttonous. <laughs> and consequently, though, the problem with, with that is I have a weight problem. I am not at an ideal weight. And because of that weight problem, I've had some health problems that come along with the extra weight, which comes from overeating, eating things you know that are bad for you. I have a big sweet tooth. I don't know if any of you struggle with that, but yeah, you can put the chips in front of me or the French fries. Nah, whatever. If it's a cake or cookie or a piece of pie or chocolate, I'm all over it. <laughs> um, but, you know, they just, oh, they just taste so good. But that's one area where I struggle. I eat too much of something and I eat more than what I need. I'm one of those people that I'm a fast eater. I don't know if you're a fast or slow eater, but I eat pretty quick and I'm up there for seconds before my body's had a chance to say, hello, we're good. Don't really need any more. (laughs) And I overeat. Um, Again, didn't need it. It just tastes so good. But there's a price, there's a price to pay for that. And in, you know, preparing for this episode and thinking about my own areas of life, well, this one I already knew, but I've struggled with greed when it comes to money and possessions as well. There was a time when my husband and I, well, we had spent a good number of years struggling financially. We gave up a lot to keep our children out of the public school system in our area. And so we did a combination of private and and homeschooling. We had four kids and it was a struggle. No doubt it was a struggle and I would do the same thing again. But at times I really struggled with not having the money and the things that, that I would have liked to have had. And then the kids got older and as they moved out and got independent, became independent, things picked up for us financially And I began to live a little beyond my means. I went through this season and I still kind of battle with it from time to time. But I began to go through this season of spending. Yeah, some of it was necessary, but a lot of it, it just wasn't. I was on this high where, well, well, I felt like I had to, I felt like I had to make up for lost time because I had been so in my mind deprived all these years of so many things and it honestly it did it felt freeing at the time I say at the time it felt freeing it felt good to know hey if I want to go out and buy it I can do it and I did (laughs) that's the problem but I started putting my comfort and my security there and I didn't realize it at the time but I was also kind of stepping away from God there because I was always with God to try to keep me when, when things were tough, when things were harder to, to stay true to God and and to, to do the right thing and to have the, the strength to persevere. And, and I was just getting fed off of buying things and purchasing things and, and having things and doing what I thought was making up for, for lost time. But God began convicting me about how poorly I was stewarding his money because it is his money. It's his, uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I can't think of what verse that is, but it's what the Bible tells us. Everything is, is God's. And so as he, he began convicting me about how poorly I was stewarding his money and his resources. And I began to realize that I feel pretty empty. <laughs> Like, this isn't work. It's temporary. And, you know, 
when you when you get stuff, <clears throat> I don't know if you've experienced this, but stuff becomes it becomes old news. Things that you thought would be great. I, oh, if I could just have this, my life would be great. I, it would just, oh, it would just help. It, it'll be great. And then how many years later you're throwing it away or in the garbage or giving it, donating it to charity or putting a price tag of 50 cents on it at a garage sale. But it, it becomes old news. And not only that, with this spending, you're racking up debt. I was racking up debt again, which I we had gotten out from under but that debt isn't just my debt. I'm married. I have a family. So that debt, it becomes my husband's and any of the kids, you know, it, it affects our family spending. And, and so, yeah, it just, it doesn't just affect me. I remember a lesson I learned when my, again, my husband and I were struggling at the time financially. My sister and her husband had a garage sale and asked me if I wanted to bring some stuff over to sell. And I was like, oh yeah, heck yeah, money, right? I can make some money here. So I got a bunch of stuff together to sell. And of course I put the price tags on When I put the prices on it, I put the absolute most I thought I could possibly get for these items. I marked it as high as I dare mark it, hoping that someone would be willing to pay that price. <laughs> So my sister and her husband, they had a lot of nice things for sale there. And the customers started coming and they're milling about and I'm sitting there, you know, with my little calculator all set, you know, to add everything up and, you know, make, got my change to make change. And, and, um, well, long story short, my sister and brother-in-law sold a ton of stuff. Yeah. People would come up to them and say, and ask them about it and, they were either giving stuff to people for half the price that they were asking for, or sometimes just they were giving it free. Just, nah, just take it. It's good. We got our use out of it. Just take it. And I'm like, wow. I'm thinking, nope, not me. Uh-uh. I'm going to get all I can for this. <laughs> but after a while, God was convicting me. And I was even thinking, I wish I could be like that. And I could have, right? Nope, I chose not to. I refused to be generous and I stuck with my greed, my desire for more. Again, brother and sister-in-law or sister and brother-in-law made out really good. They sold a lot that day, <clears throat> walked away with some decent cash. I walked away with nothing. Well, I can't say I walked away with nothing. I mean, I walked away with all the stuff that I had come with. <laughs> I had to load it back up into the car and go back home. And I remember pulling out of the driveway that day and I'm driving away and just thinking about how successful the sale was for them and realizing just how my own selfishness and greed really did me in. And I knew I needed to be like them. And I remember asking God on the way home to just please help me to be like him or to be like them, not to be like him, of course. And, you know, even when it comes to this podcast, I can see where greed can set in. I mean, I've been writing for years and I was a blogger before I um, decided to jump into the world of podcasting because I like to talk more than I do write. <laughs> but, you know, when you're doing those social media accounts and you're trying to get followers, well, sometimes that overtakes the priority of actually just getting the message out, God's message. Because, you know, you want this big platform, you want to have followers. And, and, and that's okay. I mean, for here, of course, I want followers and subscribers, because I want to know that through God and for God, and with God's help, I'm making a difference in people's lives, that I can glorify God by sharing his truths, shining a light in the dark place, helping others to do the same, helping each person to be that one little candle. But I got to keep that in check. You know, you got to keep it in check. Social media, I think, really brings out the greed in, in, in a lot of us, whether it's uh, greed for followers or greed for likes or just even attention, right? But what I did here, and it's, it's right in front of me, and I'm looking at now at it now. It's behind my microphone. But I printed out Colossians 3.23. I put it in a nice frame, and I can look at it 
as I'm recording. And it says, And whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Just as a reminder that, hey, Rebecca, you work for him. It's about him. And it's about that person who's listening to your voice. It's not about you. So recap, greed is definitely about money and possessions, but it can also be for attention, um, followers, right? Success in a, in a ministry or your job. And no one is, is, um, exempt from it. I mean, we're all, we all can, no matter who you are, you can fall prey to greed. And I know pastors struggle with this. Sometimes you have pastors, and God God love pastors for what they do, but some of them struggle for wanting with wanting a large congregation. They want the pews filled. A full church says to them, success, successful ministry. Or perhaps they want to fill the pews because they can fill the offering plate more. But the problem with that kind of thinking, that greed, and believe me, it does happen, it, and it's led to the problem of a watered-down, sugar-coated gospel, right? Because you're trying to get people in, and sometimes when you're trying to get people in for those reasons, you compromise, and it doesn't matter. You become this, what they call a seeker-friendly church. You look for worldly ways to attract worldly people, new members, and you get them in, but then you got to keep catering to them. And so you're going to have all these worldly carnal so-called Christians sitting in the pews each week. And well, those kind of people, you know, you can't really talk about hell. You can't really talk about the extent of our sin. You can't really talk about hot button cultural issues that are really um, creeping into the, the church. You can't, you can't, you can't talk about all these these things for fear of offending people and, and having them leave. And there's, you know, you have the prosperity gospel. So you just, just all these things that affect us and they affect the, the kingdom of God when greed comes into play. And oftentimes we don't even know that it's there, but it is. So what about you? As I'm sharing some of these areas where I've been greedy or where greed can hide out, um, present itself. Is God convicting you in some areas? And if he is, don't be afraid of it. Please embrace it. Even if it's painful, because remember, God doesn't condemn us, but he convicts us. He lovingly convicts us. And sometimes it's painful, but he does it because he loves us. He wants us to grow. He wants us to grow in him. He wants us to grow closer to him. And and he wants to help us overcome sin. And greed causes us to, well, obviously, if we're greedy, I think you could say we have an ungrateful heart, right? For what God has already done for us, what he's given us. And if we're greedy, I'm going to assume that we're not being very generous because greed, well, wants more for itself, right? Luke chapter 12, verses 20 and 21 speaks of the rich man who was storing up treasures, treasures for himself, but he was neglecting the kingdom of God. It says, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. So here's some more things about greed. Greed does not love. Greed is destructive. It is selfish. It's insensitive. Ephesians 4.19 says, And they, having become callous, have given themselves up to indecent behavior, for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Greed steals life, Proverbs one nineteen. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. 
Greed brings conflict. Proverbs 28, 25, the greedy stir up conflict, but those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Greed ruins families. Proverbs 15, 27, whoever is greedy for unjust gain brings trouble to his family, but whoever hates bribes will live. And greed warps leaders. Isaiah 56, 11, yes, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand they all look to their own way, each one to his unjust gain, without exception. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, there's a command for us. It says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. You know, in this country, we are wealthy. We have more than one car. We have comfy, warm, and dry homes. Plenty of clothes and shoes in our dresser drawers and our closets. Many of us, we have several televisions in our homes. You name it, we've got it. Indoor plumbing, refrigerators, stoves to cook our food on. Oh my goodness. Any kind of luxury you can imagine, right? So in that verse in 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, command those who are rich in this present world. That's you. That's me. Think about how many other parts of the world live. We are the wealthy that God is referring to. He's not just talking about the, the millionaires and the billionaires. He's talking about us. He tells us to be generous and willing to share. But as sinister as the greed is, call it the big G, big G word. <laughs> greed doesn't have to rule us. It doesn't have to ruin our lives. And it doesn't have to ruin the lives of those around us. There is a cure for greed, and actually they happen to be two G words, <laughs> two more G words. The words are generosity and gratitude. So let's look at generosity first, okay? When we're being generous, we're not focusing on ourselves or our own wants. When we're generous, we're focusing on what others need, right? We're others-focused. I think sometimes we forget how rewarding it is to give. Yeah, receiving feels great. It, it does. But giving, it's a whole different kind of feeling. Receiving feels good, but I don't think it feels rewarding. Giving feels rewarding. And as far as generosity goes, there's a lot of ways to be generous. It's not necessarily with money or things, although those are great ways too. But we can be generous with our time. We can be generous with our service, our love. We can even be generous by sharing the gospel. Let's be generous with the gospel, right? Let's be generous with the knowledge and the wisdom of God. So yeah, there's lots of ways to be generous. And here are some great verses about generosity. And I'm going to read a few to you, but I will have a more... Uh, exhaustive list of verses on generosity and gratitude on my website. Okay, so generosity. Proverbs 11 verses 24 and 25 says, One person gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Proverbs 19 17, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. Proverbs 22, 9, the generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. Matthew 10, 42, and if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. And remember the widow, the, the widow's offering in, in Luke uh, chapter 21, Jesus was there watching 
And this poor widow came and she put these two small copper coins onto the plate. This woman, Jesus pointed out, she was poor and she gave out of her poverty. She gave everything she had. The other people, they gave out of their excess. There was no sacrifice when they gave. It was easy for them to give. Yeah, it was a bigger amount. But again, it was out of their excess. This woman, that that took a lot of trust, if you think about it, for her to give that, to give that to God. But let's finish generosity out with the most generous one of all. And that, of course, is our Heavenly Father. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Can't beat that generosity. (laughs) God gave his only son whom he loved. He gave him to be a propitiation for our sin. And I think a great prayer to help us to ask God to help us to be mindful is Psalm 119, 36. And it says, Lord, turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gain. Gratitude, that's our other G word. So we talked about how we can be when we're being generous and the difference it can make. But what about when we're being grateful, when we're thankful, we're showing our gratitude? Well, when we're grateful, we're focusing on what we do have rather than what we don't have. Our focus is on what God's given to us, what he's done for us. And so if we're focusing on those things, that's going to keep us from focusing on what we don't have. Because when we, and it's real easy to go there, I speak from experience. When you focus on that, it leads to discontentment. And if we're discontent, it's going to lead to greed. It's just all on that same little, little road. And when we're grateful for what God's done for us, for what he's given us and and who he is, we can't help but be closer to God, right? And when we're closer to God, we're filled with Christ. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. And if we're filled, there's not going to be any empty spots. There's not going to be a void there because when we have that emptiness or that void, uh, we often end up trying to fill it with the things that aren't important, with, with worldly things. So, Verses on gratitude, Ephesians chapter five, verses three and four says, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 11, 12, I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. That was the uh, Apostle Paul talking there. And we know how much the Apostle Paul went through a lot to proclaim Christ. Psalm seven seventeen. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing praises of the name of the Lord most high. Psalm 100 verses four and five says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is a great one that's very familiar. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, three more verses. I I hope I'm not throwing too many verses at you, but it's the word of God, right? Hey, can never have too much. (laughs) Colossians 2 verses 6 and 7. So then just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Colossians 3, 15 and 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts 
since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I think with that verse, this is a good place to end the Bible verses. You know, God's will for us, it is to always be thankful and to be generous, to share our blessings and in all ways to acknowledge him in those blessings. Because God, he, he's our provider. He never fails us when it comes to that, when it comes to providing for us. He knows what we need. He tells us in Matthew 6, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. He tells us, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you'll eat or drink or about your body. And he asks us, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? And he tells us that the pagans run after all these things. And he reminds us, he says, your heavenly father knows that you need them. He knows what we need. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Thank you, God. (laughs) So what I did is I put together, and you can get these free on my website, okay? And I will post the, the links on Instagram as well as on my Facebook page. But I put together a beautiful gratitude list, and it's ready and waiting for you to just fill it in. Write down, focus on, and give thanks to God for all your blessings, all the things that you have to be thankful for. And there's a lot. There really is. So I've got the gratitude list. And along with that, I have made up some nice sets of scripture cards on gratitude and generosity. Again, free, print them out, cut them out, and then post them wherever you'd like around the house or in your car, wherever it is as a reminder for you, because if you're like me and I probably more than anybody, I need reminders of these. So I printed some out for myself, (laughs) but yeah, I, I hope you enjoy them. I hope you really benefit from them. And the other thing I have is a worksheet on generosity. I printed out this worksheet to kind of get your, get your mind flowing and thinking a little bit about ways in which you can, you can be more generous. And you can get these things if you go on to my One Little Candle website. It's at www.onelittlecandlepodcast.com. Www. I can't talk. www.onelittlecandlepodcast.com. If you'd like to go beyond this podcast and get in on the conversation, you can join our Facebook community. We have a group page, and that's called Candles Together candles together on Facebook. There's also a Facebook page, One Little Candle Podcast. Um, It's just some extra encouraging inspirational things, notifications of of new episodes and, uh, you know, just kind of direct you to where you can find some freebies and and promos and and whatnot going on. So, because I like to throw those unexpected goodies in there for my followers and subscribers. So make sure you're subscribed or you're following if you do want access to any of these things. Okay, song of the day, or should I say songs of the day? I've got, usually I post a song at the end that kind of ties everything in, but today I have songs because there was just so much. You will find, as always, the links to these songs in the podcast episode description, which can be found in whatever platform you're listening to me through or on my website. And I will also post the links on Instagram and my Facebook page. So we have songs about thanks and gratitude, and there's two of them by Don, uh, Don, Don Moen. And the first song is called Give Thanks, simple enough. And the other one is Thank You, Lord. And then we have songs on being generous and giving. The first song is by Matthew West, and it's called Do Something. And then we have one of my favorite, favorite groups. It's Casting Crowns, and this song is called If We Are the Body. And... One more song, and this isn't about us giving. This is about the giver, the most generous one that we know. 
giver of all. And that is our Lord. And the name of that song is called Generous Giver. And that's by Music Meets Heaven. Again, you'll find the links to the songs, podcast episode description, on social media, or my website. So until next time, I would just like to really encourage you, let your light shine. Let it shine by making an extra effort this week to be mindful, be mindful of God's blessings. Focus on what you have instead of what you don't have. And then look for ways in which you can be more generous. Maybe there's someone you know that's in need. Be more generous to them. Be generous to them this week because you know what it'll do? It'll keep your flame burning bright and it'll shine a light in the darkness. So you go out there and be that one little candle. Thanks for tuning in. Take care and God bless. Do you want to know more about God? Are you looking for true peace and hope in your life? True peace and hope, that's only found in God. If you want to know more about God and how you can experience his love and peace, Peace with God, a ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, will show you the way. Log on to www.peacewithgod.net. That's www.peacewithgod.net. And find the peace and hope that you've been looking for.